we've tried, we've tried doing that. I don't, I don't know what the best way to do that. My name's Jamin Horton. I run Soldier Creek Bison here in Burlingame, Kansas. Um, we're a cow-calf operation. We run about 72 head on 323 acres. seconds and then sometimes they don't want to unroll like right. Is it hard to spear that right in the center? Sometimes. first herd I had, they would recognize me when I pulled up in the driveway. Whenever anybody else, they wouldn't come up. Yeah. It's interesting. They say they have really poor eyesight, but I could have mine a quarter mile away and they'd, they'd see me and they'd come up. I, it might be just smell. Yeah. They know. When we were doing Roundup, I invited some, some neighbors to come help me kind of get them all in the corral. And normally, I could just call them in with some cake. They'd run right in the corral. Sh I could shut the gate and be done. But uh, when, the, when the neighbors were over, they wouldn't move. They wouldn't run in. Really? It was crazy. So why buffalo or bison? Which one do you, you call it? Yeah. <laughs> I guess it depends on who you're talking to. Mainly, I call them buffalo. But, you know, bison is the technical term, as you know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, it was something, you know, two years ago. I was like, uh, this is it. We're going to do it. And took the plunge, sold everything we had, and moved out here to Kansas, so. Really? Just something about them, you know? I think you've been bit by the same bug I have, so. Yeah. You said you uh, grew up out in the country, so you were kind of around uh, the cattle industry a little bit? I mean, I was. Our family was not affiliated with, you know, with uh, with livestock, but we were right, you know, right in the middle of it, and kind of grew up around horses and chickens and cattle, and, um, you know, being around all that stuff, so. Uh, Started a family, moved to the suburbs like everyone else does, and when they were grown, I decided I wanted to try something different. And we looked around and fell in love with Eastern Kansas, and here we are. So when I first got here, I was like, "Oh my God, what did I just do? <laughs> you know, what did I get myself into?" But it's a labor of love. It's more of a lifestyle. You have to, you know, you don't do this to get rich. You do it because you enjoy doing it. Right.
kind of six, six strand barbed wire fence. There's a T post, T post about what every six feet, <laughs> um, and then every 60 feet, sometimes more, sometimes less. I have two and three eighths old pipe okay. driven in the ground. And so it's probably overkill, as you know, for kind of for buffalo, but it helps me sleep better at night. So. How tall is it? Uh, it depends, but for the most part, it's probably chin height. You know, um, five foot. Five foot eleven in some places. Really? They don't bump it. They don't mess with it. If anything, I have more problem with the deer. You know, they'll you know, sure, get hung up in it, and you'll they'll get the sixth and fifth strand mixed up with each other, but you just pop it loose. And then I've tried to do the Greg Judy bird houses. You know, throughout. They're hard to see. They're usually mounted to the oil pipe. Now, why why bird houses? The tree swallows. Uh -huh. Really trying to invite the tree swallows in, cut down on the flies. Try to do natural if I can. Supposedly, I think they eat 4,000 flies a day. Really? Between a pair of them or eat or individual. But we didn't, not, not all of them were occupied this year, but we definitely had, I think we had six to eight pairs. So hoping that will grow and we'll see more birds out here. It's kind of magical in the summertime. End of the day, they're all eating grass. Birds are flying overhead. I mean, I'd like to see more dung beetles. I'd like to see, uh, you know, nature handle this. Obviously, are, flies are a problem in the summertime. They're a nuisance. You'll see welts on their back, even open sores. I don't know if you've experienced that yet or not, but it's, uh, it's not fun for the buffalo. You don't like to see them suffer, but at the same time, you don't necessarily just want to pour chemicals all over them if you don't have to. You know? Sometimes you just can't get around it, and that's the... That's the way to address the issue, but anything I can do to let Mother Nature take care of the flies is what I'm going to try to do. And so yeah, here was you know some trees and it was a um, kind of a ridge and had them kind of bulldoze this down. But of course, what comes up in its uh, aftermath is weeds. So I'm trying to roll out some hay here, this fertilizer, and try to get some grass growing in here. Do you see much results on? Uh... I mean, have you been rolling out hay for a couple of years? Just last year. Just for the last first year. Time. Yeah, okay. We probably rolled out 90 bales. Okay. So, I, I'm not going to say that I've seen, you know, results instantly from that, but I know it's the better way to do it rather than just kind of feeding them in one central area and destroying a certain area. A lot of guys around here will take the animals off their land and put them in a winter pasture or winter enclosure and just feed them there all throughout the winter. I, I get it to each their own, but. Uh, something with, with what Greg Judy was doing resonated with me and thought I'd give it a try. And this way I kind of keep them out on the land. There's plenty of grass here, so hopeful they can kind of mix the hay with what we got and get through the winter.
electric fence from here to there, and I've usually got electric fence, so I, I usually try to get them over this area with some with some cake because there's water over there. So I'll cake them over there, and then they know they can come through here. So what I'll do is I'll leave this gate open and the gate open in the back, and they know they can come through here, get cake, and then go out back that way. So come roundup time, push them in through here, shut the gate, and then they're they're closed in. I see. And believe it or not, just a just a one strand electric fence from here to there, you know, making kind of a, a Y here, holds them. You know, they, they don't bust through it and they just run right on through. So I've got kind of two calf pins here and there. So when we sort them off the chute, they'll come in here. And this is kind of the main corral. So believe it or not, this will hold, you know. 75 animals pretty easy this area right here yeah what's what's the space measure do you know i don't right off here i know those are 24 foot sections so 120 feet, 100 by 60 or 70 or something like that and it does a trick and we'll keep them in here overnight and then start round up first thing in the morning so i really love these panels these are from jb pipe i love these they built them They've got them high. Got them running through. Yep. I know you said seven foot, but I get by with the six. Sure. So it seems to work. And I like that the legs are in a little bit. On some of these outer panels, I was talking about it earlier. I got them from another guy, and supposedly they're 30 feet, but they range in size. Some are 28 and a half, some are 29, some are 30. Uh, and the feet are on the edge. So all you can really do is go straight. With the feet here, butt them up and then they've got these brackets here these brackets are great too because the buffalo will hit up against this because as you're starting to work them they're gonna kind of hit up against this this kind of holds it all together and then you got the chains put them together as well and so nothing's getting through that when you talk to guys about building a corral kind of what to do everyone does everything differently but a common theme I heard from a lot of people is don't go cementing everything in the ground. Right. You know, get these stand-up panels, chain them together, see what works, make adjustments. And so, you know, every year you're going to learn what to do, what not to do. And I definitely learned some things not to do and some things I need to fix. And I'll just kind of show you those as we walk through. So that's what I really like about these because if I need to change it, I can change it. That's the uh, first thing that I learned on our last place is whenever we moved, I lost all the corral system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I decided yeah. not to do that again. Yeah. When this is open, they know they can come around through here and there's that gap. See that gap right here? Uh -huh. They can come through here and come eat food or whatever. Normally I keep the food trough right up against that. So they know they can come around here. So it's two guys usually in the pen and you're kind of peeling off, you know, six to eight at a time. And they think that they're coming around here and they're gonna run right back around with the rest of the herd. But instead, I've got this gate open. And talk about lessons learned. I learned um, this is uh, something that I need to fix. You know, you see people using tarps, and, and I probably should should have used a tarp here. But what I really should have done is done a heavier gate with some steel plate on it. If you look at the the bend on that, a little bit. <laughs> so normally this is shut like this flush up against it and as they run in you just kind of shut it behind them and then I've got these kind of lead up pins and that's what I liked about JB pipe as well is because kind of I told them what I was looking for and they built this really so probably gonna put some steel plate on this because as the Buffalo go in they have a tendency to want to come back and they hit up against these pretty hard but it didn't bend these but these roll and these can be managed from someone on the outside. And it's good, what I like about this is you see some of the alleyways, so they're so tight and the buffalo have a tendency to bounce up and kind of get their legs over and want to get out. What I like about this is this gives them a chance to kind of move around. And you can have two, two in here at a time, two or three in here at a time, and they're not banging up against it. They're not trying to jump over it. They can see their buddies over there. And so they have a tendency to be more calm. Easily managed from, you know, someone out there. My wife's out here. We get people coming to help us. And this is the only thing I need to change 
So, or one of the things I need, not the only thing I need to change. I need to have some kind of metal arm here because they have a tendency to get right here and you can't get them to go in there. So I have to kind of section this off some or angle it in so it drives them towards uh, the chute. And I'll take you around and show you the chute. This is squeeze chute itself. Um, this is probably every bit of 10 inches thick. And so I actually was able to pick this up through Dick Gehring. I kind of cleaned it up a little bit, painted it, uh, put some scales underneath it, and then kind of bolted it to the concrete. And it did the trick. We didn't have any problems with it. Problem is, is that, you know, a lot of guys will sort their buffalo before they kind of run them through the squeeze chute. So, you know, you'll have, you know, calves, you know, bulls off to the side and everything else, or however you want to kind of separate them. And then you can adjust the length at which it kind of squeezes them in here. I didn't have that luxury side so to kind of find a happy balance. So, you know, sometimes calves were a little loose, but for the most part, it did the trick. It's a little bit older, but it seems to do the trick. And, you know, it's, it's a pretty big investment as it is. And I figured I'd start with this. I'd love to have hydraulics. You know, you see the hydraulics, and that seems to be the way to go. Get by with manual and maybe go from there. What's the, uh, what's the benefits of the hydraulic? Uh, less wear and tear on your body. You know, this is like kind of managing a puppet. You see all the strings and all the different things you have to have to control. Um, you can you can operate it with two people, but with hydraulics, of course, it's just a flick of a switch and a whole lot quicker. You know, we have tables lined up here. You know, serving chili, coffee, beer, what have you. It's a good time to get you know people out, work the buffalo because it's, it's you can't really do it by yourself. I mean, you can, but a whole lot easier and a lot more fun if you just got neighbors and friends around to help. How often do you do it? Once a year. What are you doing when you work them? Like, are you are you worming them? Are you vaccinating them? Yeah, I, I wormed them this year with Sidectin. Okay. And I wormed everyone. Next year, I'm you know like we were talking about previously, I, I may only worm the calves and maybe not worm the adults. Okay. So just just worming really. Just worming and weighing them, uh, ear tagging ones that don't have ear tags, you know, ear tagging all the calves. This is your area where you keep all your hay bales? All the hay. Got electric wire around there, keeping the buffalo out. Yeah, just a temporary battery solar charger, it does the trick. And I just come out in the morning with the hail and roller and let down the fence, hook up and take off and feed the buffalo. Now, ideally, you want to unroll it in the same manner in which it was being rolled, but in a hurry, I put all these different hay bales up, and so some are backwards, so when you unroll it, it either kind of just, just disintegrates in, you know, over 20 feet, or it'll just unroll for 200 feet, so. Thank you to Soldier Creek Bison, Jamin, for uh, just giving us an awesome tour of your, tour of your ranch. Um, beautiful, beautiful setting out here in the Flint Hills. So they've got a lot of really nice animals. You guys have done a really good job for just being in this for two years. So really, really cool place. Appreciate so that. check these guys out. They are actually on YouTube. Look up Soldier Creek Bison. I'll leave a link in the description below. So thank you, Jamin, and we'll see you guys next time. Let you go.